So this will be a quick demonstration of the Quizaic app. Um, what we'll want to do first is take a look at the quizzes that have already been created. So we'll click the Browse tab, and this tells us we need to log in. So gen the general rule is if you want to do anything with content, view a quiz, create a quiz, clone a quiz, um, edit a quiz, host a quiz, etc., you need to be logged in. But if you want to play a quiz, you can be anonymous. There's no need to log in. But since I want to show you the Browse tab, I'm going to log in by clicking this little person icon. It'll go through the sign in with Google process, select my account, and I'm in. And now I can look at all the quizzes that are available. Um, there's a little toggle up here between my quizzes and all quizzes for convenience. Um, next up, I'll create a quiz. So I'll click on the Create tab, and I get a form that I can fill out. I'll call this Mark's Quiz. Not terribly original, but then I select a quiz generator. I'm going to go with Gemini Ultra, which is the best current model that um, I have access to with this app. And for the topic, I'm going to say literature. Now, this is freeform text, and because a large language model is generating the quiz, I can say literally anything. If I wanted to get really specific, for example, uh, I could say um, 18th century French literature about explorers or you know something really obscure. I'm just going to say literature to keep it simple. I'm going to go with five multiple choice questions, uh, intermediate level difficulty, and I'll have it do an, uh, generate the quiz in English, which you can plug in any language you want there. So I get a little card here for as sort of a placeholder for the quiz being generated. And I also get a progress indicator because it's taking a little while to talk to the LLM to generate the quiz. It's also generating an image based on the topic that I gave it. So here's the, you can see it's an image of a, looks like a young woman reading a book. Um, so now um, I have a new quiz. I can edit the quiz if I want. And that gives me the ability to go through the questions that were generated, change the possible responses, add questions, delete questions. So that's really nice because um, you might not be totally happy with the AI generated content, but that gives you the ability to sort of touch it up if you need to. Next, I'll go back to browse and I'll click the host button for our new quiz. And this lets you run the quiz either synchronously or asynchronously. The difference being a synchronous quiz is where everyone's playing the, the quiz at the same time and you're keeping a leaderboard and all that kind of stuff. And it's essentially a competition. Whereas an asynchronous quiz, you can think of the, the use case there or one very um, kind of uh, good example, I think, of a, of a good use case would be a teacher creates a quiz on some subject that you're studying in school, and on Friday afternoon, they say, here's the asynchronous quiz, and they give you a URL, and all the students can take the quiz over the weekend anytime they want at their own pace. And then the teacher can come back on Monday and find the score for all the different students and find out who took it and who didn't, and so on. Um, the most typical scenario is synchronous, so we'll, we'll go with that. And I'll set it to 15 seconds. You can set an arbitrary number of seconds for each response. And I'll say start hosting. This gives us a URL as well as a QR code. So if you're doing this in front of an audience or in front of a classroom, people can take out their phone and scan the QR code to go directly to the quiz taking um, service. I'll just do this in a separate tab. Um, I'll paste the URL here. Um, so it wants me to identify myself because I'm not logging in. And actually, I'll, I'll, I'll illustrate the non-login scenario because it automatically logged me in based on um, probably a cookie or something in my environment. So I'm going to force it to log out, go to play, and enter the, the session number. Or I'll just re- there's a couple of ways to get into play, but I'll just re-enter that URL and I'll give my name. And because I'm not logged in, I have to identify myself in some fashion. And this is just a, a handle that you can make up. And once you click play quiz, it says waiting for the quiz to start and um, you show up in the registered players list. I'm not gonna do multiple players just for, for um, sake of time. But you can imagine there could be many people and they would all show up on this registered players list. Um, now the host will come back here and click start quiz. 
and you'll see the question pops up here, but it also pops up with a timer on the player's um, experience. Uh, who delivers the Queen Mab speech? I have no idea. I'm going to say Mercutio, and I just got lucky. Um, now, this hosting side will tell you how many players have responded, one of one. So everybody that's playing has responded. I can click Show Results, and we get a little histogram of the responses and a leaderboard. Um, if I click Next Question, you'll see that the player's screen automatically advances to the next question, which American novelist is known for Invisible Man. I think that was Ellison and should get credit for that one. So that's how it works. Um, you can keep going through the questions until you get to the end, and then you can stop the quiz. And one cool thing is once a player is into the quiz playing session, um, you can the host can run multiple quizzes one after another. Let's say I finished Mark's quiz and now I want to run this football quiz. Um, I can start hosting that, say start quiz, and the quiz just starts running for the players. So the, the, um, the takeaway there is players don't need to keep reconnecting for every new quiz. They connect to a session only once, and then you can have multiple quizzes within a given session. Um, yeah, so that's kind of a quick overview of how it works. If you want to know more, you can click this About tab and see some of the, some of the background information about it. And really the point of this video was to give you a sense of how the app works because um, this video will be part of a multi-part blog series with articles that go into depth about some of the technical choices I made, how I designed the app, why it is the way it is, and um, a lot about the lessons that I learned uh, applying um, generative AI and cloud computing to solve this problem. because. Really, the whole idea about this app, it's a demonstration vehicle, not meant to be a production app, and it's not an official Google product. It's just an app that I've been experimenting with as a way of learning more about how to build AI-based uh, user applications. So I hope you enjoy that, and hope you enjoy the blog article. I will put a link in the um, video description to point you to the blog articles I just referred to. Thanks.